all of you blender artists out there welcome to part three the final part of this beverage commercial tutorial series i'm making in blender you might be asking yourself why i'm calling it part three the final part even though i've said it was going to be a five part series and that's because i decided to save time by just putting the last three episodes into one big collage so in part three I'll be showing you how to do the basic stuff such as the modeling of the liquid, the cap, and the texturing of it as well. And in part 4, I'll be showing you how to do the basic stuff such as the lighting, backdrop, the flooring, and all that. And in part 5, the last part, I'll be showing you how to do the particle systems for the water droplets, and I'll be showing you how to do the foam for the bottle itself. So, if you have any questions by the way, so if you have any issues with Blender and it's not working properly, Make sure to comment down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. So make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and the notification button and let's get on with the video. So first for the liquid, we're going to go into edit mode over here with the bottle chosen and we're going to go into the Y axis view. So with edge selected over here, we're going to turn on the wireframe mode. Reason being that we want to be able to choose the faces or edges that's behind our view. So first we're going to drag from here all the way down to the bottom and this will be the height of our liquid if you want to go higher you could go higher but the issue that we start to have is that it'll start covering up the logo that is on top over there so now we're going to duplicate this by pressing shift d and right clicking to reset its origin and now what we want to do is separate the bottle and the liquid into two different meshes and that's because since we've duplicated these faces in edit mode the faces are going to still be linked to the bottle so now to separate them we're going to choose a to choose all the faces and we're going to press p to separate and we're going to choose by loose parts and we're going to go into object mode first and we're going to name these so we're going to name the bottle bottle and we're going to name the liquid liquid i mean you could name it whatever you want but i'm going to name it liquid simple and easy so now we're going to scale the liquid by pressing s and shift z we're just going to scale it down ever so slightly so we want to scale it just around the middle of the edge of the bottle. Okay, so right now what we're gonna wanna do is go into edit mode, but first we're gonna hide the bottle, click on the liquid, go into this mode, and as we can see that the liquid has no face on top, and liquid doesn't really work like that. So now we're gonna go into edit mode by pressing tab, choose edge select, and holding down alt, we're gonna click these edges. Now we're gonna press F. Okay, so what we have done here is now we've created a face, from the edges that we chosen. And the issue is that since we had the subdivision surface modifier on, it is gonna create this weird semi-sphere looking texture over here. So to fix that, we're gonna add a loop cut and we're gonna bring all these faces up, just like that. And right now on top, there are some ripple effects, but we're not gonna worry about it too much because we are gonna be adding the foam on top. So right now what we wanna do is go into the shading properties to add the shader. And since we've duplicated these faces, of the liquid from our bottle it's gonna have the same material so we're gonna go into the texture properties over here and we're gonna press minus for both of the textures that we've added and instead we're gonna add a new texture and we're gonna name this liquid just like we did with the meshes so over here if we go into object right now as you can see there's a principal bsdf and we don't want that we want to be able to see through the liquid and not just plain black so to fix that we're gonna add a glass shader or a glass BSDF. And we're gonna plug in the BSDF into the surface. Right now, we can't see through it if we go into the render properties, but we still wanna add some properties of a beverage. And to do that, we're gonna add a volume absorption node. So we're gonna search up volume absorption. And we're gonna plug the volume into volume. So now for the density, we're gonna choose something around 65. Now, uh, for the color, I'm just going to go into the hex code and we're going to type in EFCF00. And it's going to go with the color, something around that. You could make it darker or lighter if you want, but I felt like this um, hex code was pretty good. Okay, so now if we go into layout over here and we unhide everything by pressing Alt-H, we will see that 
even our reference image showed up. Right now, I'm just gonna hide them from the viewport and the camera display over here. And the reason I didn't delete them is because um, we might need it in future tutorials where uh, if there was a mistake, we could fix that. Okay, so now um, we're gonna go into render view over here to see how it looks like. So right now, the liquid looks really thin. As in, um, it doesn't look that dark. And that's that really doesn't matter because um, in future tutorials, I will be adding a background to it and that will fix every issue that we do have. So let's move on to the lid. And by the way, over here, if you don't see these camera symbols over here, just click on that over here and just ch disable and render and choose that. So that just shows these symbols. Okay, so right now, um, what we want to do is model the lid. And to do that first, we're going to go into this mode over here. We're going to hide everything there is. So now we're gonna add a plane, go on shift A, mesh, plane. And we are not gonna do anything in object mode just yet. First, go into edit mode, rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees, scale it by 0.5, and then scale it on the Y axis by 0.7. Okay, so now what that did is it created this kind of mesh. And now what we wanna do is add a loop cut just right here in the middle. And just bring it up somewhere around here. We're gonna add another loop cut. Scroll up once to create two loop cuts. Right click to set the origin and scale it on the y axis until it's around here. So now we're gonna go into face select over here and we're gonna extrude it out backwards. Somewhere around there. And we're gonna choose this bottom face, delete, and faces since we don't need that. So now we're going to have to go into edge select mode, choose that edge, and we're going to scale it on the y-axis. So something around here. So now if we um, go into object mode, we're going to add a modifier, and this modifier will be the array modifier. And I'm going to choose 12. So if we go into edit mode right now, we can choose um, all the faces over here, A, and we're going to rotate it on the z-axis by 90. And that will fix our issue where it kind of feels like it's on the wrong rotation. So now we're going to add a simple deform modifier. And that what that does is it creates the bend. So we're going to choose bend and choose merge over here in the array modifier. And we're going to set the angle to something around 360. And we're going to choose the axis to be Z. And that has created this. So right now the objects are or the faces are kind of popping out. And if you want to fix that issue, just go into edit mode, choose A, R, Z, and 180. And that just um, flips over the well, faces. So now we want to um, apply these modifiers first. Apply the array modifier first. And then the uh, simple deform. So now we're going to go into edit mode, choose edge, select. And we're going to choose these edges. And we're going to scale it down. Somewhere around here, or somewhere around here, and we're just gonna bring it up a little, and F to create the faces, tab. So now this looks like a cap, sort of. So one thing we're missing is the smoothness to it, and to do that, we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier over here, and we're gonna change the values until something around three. The more you go, the higher, or the smoother it looks, but at the same time, um, the harder it is on your computer. So go with a value around three and right click to shade smooth. And we've created this. And this will be our lid. So now for the texturing of this, we're gonna go into shading over here and we are gonna add a texture. So to do that, we're gonna change the base color into whatever you like. But I'm gonna go with the yellowish color because I'm gonna try to get this kind of metallic orangish yellowish color. Somewhere around here. If you want to copy my color, just copy this hex code over here. Okay, so for the um, other stuff, I want it to be like this glossy but still metallic texture. And to do that, we could add a glossy BSDF, but it doesn't matter too much. So first we're going to change the metallic value from 0 all the way to 1. Just wait for it to load. Yeah, there. And we're gonna tune down the roughness to a value of, well, let's just type it in, 0 0.27. And yeah, it's gonna look something like 
this. So if you want, you could change the roughness up because I feel like it is a little too rusty right now. Or, sorry, rough. Rough. Okay, so now we're going to go to layout. And we're going to unhide everything by pressing Alt-H. I'm going to hide the reference image again. And we're just going to scale it up, scale it down until it fits the bottle. So right now, um, since we've added a array modifier, the origin point is going to be not in the middle so it's going to be over here you see that little dot that thing so right now if we were to scale it it's not gonna i mean it will scale but it won't look it won't be that accurate so to fix that we're gonna scale and move everything in edit mode so go into edit mode by pressing tab or choosing edit mode over here a to select everything and we're gonna start doing it so when you're on the top view mode over here by pressing um number pad seven or the z we're gonna move it until it's somewhere right in the middle. So you could go into wireframe mode to see better. And then scale it down, move it. Scale it somewhere around here. Now go into the X or Y axis view mode over here. We're just gonna move this up. So by pressing G, Z, just gonna move this up all the way over here. Go closer to get a well, closer view and move it until these edges start or these corners over here start pointing out of these objects. So somewhere around here, they start pointing out. So we're just going to move it up and there we go. So right now, um, I feel like this lid is a little too high for the bottle. So I'm just going to go into edit mode or it is in edit mode. I'm going to choose the edge select and we're just going to choose the bottom edges and we're just going to move it up on the z-axis so until over here tab and we might want to scale that again so somewhere around there tab so this is how it is gonna look so if we now go into um the x-axis or y-axis mode or i'll go into the y-axis because that's where my um blue sheet is facing in the hdri i'm just gonna save this go into render view mode and it's going to look like this. So first what I'm going to do is going into wireframe mode. I'm going to link the liquid and the cap to the bottle. And to do that, first we're going to choose the liquid. Then we're going to choose the cap by holding shift. And then at last we're going to choose the bottle. And then press control P, object, keep transform. So now if we were to do any changes to the bottle, um, the liquid and the cap will move together. So now we're just going to rotate the bottle on the negative 90 degrees angle to get this. Yeah, to get something like this with the liquid um, facing from the right of the blue face so right now we're going to add a floor and to do that we're going to open up a mesh we're going to scale it up by seven go into the shadings oh, shading properties over here and add a new shader and we're going to name the shader floor so and then we're going to delete the principal bsdf make a glossy bsdf plug in the bsdf into surface and change the roughness all the way to a zero so now if we go into layout, we can see that the bottle is now reflecting on the floor. Okay, so now we want to add a well, backdrop or a back face. And to do that, we're going to open up an image as planes. And to first, um, if we want to do that, we have to go into edit preferences over here and go into add-ons and enable the add-on called images as planes. And just tick that. So once you've ticked that, we're going to want to open up an image, which I'll put in the link below, and images as planes. And then, and then we're going to choose the image. And then we have to choose emit, and then import images as planes. So now if we just rotate it on the y-axis by negative 90, it's going to have this, and we're just going to move it until it goes to the back. So GX to go there. And we're just going to scale it up. So go into the x-axis. Over here, we're just going to move it 
on the y-axis until it's kind of in the middle of the bottle and I'm just gonna scale it up so bring it up scale it again bring scale it bring it up Let's get it down a little. So now if we go from this view over here and go into the x-axis, we can now see that we've gotten our wall backdrop and the flooring. So now what we're going to want to do is adding a soft light. And what a soft light is, is it's just a light, but just to kind of soften up the wall image. And to do that, we're going to add a light. We're going to add a point light. Move it on the y-axis first. Move it on the x-axis until it's here. Move it on the z-axis slightly, and it's gonna be somewhere over here. And with the light values, we're not gonna change anything. We're just gonna keep it at the original value. So now if we go into X mode over here, we can see that it created kind of like a little glare. We could move it up if we want, just to get a little more glare. Okay, so now another, um issue I found out was that this liquid inside was a little too light to um look good so I fiddled around for a while and I figured out the issue was that the density of the volume absorption was a little too low so we're gonna go with the value of 220 to see how that looks so if we now go into layout We can see that now it looks darker and better. There we go. So another issue I fixed was the logo up here. So the original, originally when I did it, it did look a little squished. So the, how I fixed that was by going into UV editing, choosing the faces, and I literally just scaled it on the Y axis until it fit. And then I might have had to move it on the Y axis again as well, just to mm, well get a better view. So with that all selected, um, if we look at it now, it looks pretty good. We might have to scale this up a little. And there we go. So with the lid, if I looked from the top, I, you can see this black ring over here. And that's easy to fix. And that's just um, the bottle kind of overlapping with the lid. And just to fix that, click on the lid and just move it up on the z-axis until you can't see the ring anymore somewhere around here you could to get a better view we can go into wireframe mode so somewhere around here so now if we go into x-axis again if we go into render view it's gonna look like this so right now would probably be a good time to set the um, origin for the floor uh, so usually this bottle won't be on the exact uh, axis over here. And to fix that, we could just move it down and up until it's sitting right on the plane, which would be right here. So if yours is a little high over here or something like that, just move it down until it's on the plane. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a camera. And to add a camera, first we're gonna press Shift A, go into camera over here, click on it, and we've added a camera. Right now, if we go into the camera view, we can't see anything, and that's because it's pointing right over there. So we're going to go into the x-axis view, which will be the front face, and we're going to press Control of 0 and zoom in so we can see what the camera is looking at. So this is what the camera is looking at right now, and we do not want it to be, well, horizontal. We want it to be portrait. So to fix that, we're going to go into the camera properties over here, or the render properties and we're going to make this 1080 by 1920 so we're just swapping the values around so now we can just move it on the y-axis and if you want it to be in the exact literal middle we could do this method so first we're going to click on the bottle shift s and cursor to select it and then we're going to click on the camera shift s and this time select it to cursor now what that does is it sets the camera to the middle of the bottle and then we can simply move it on the x-axis back until it's here. And we can move it up on the z-axis, move it up the back on the x-axis, and it's somewhere around here. So now I'm going to change the focal length to be something around 66. 
So just so now if we move it um, back on the x-axis slightly like that, it will get a better look. And then if we go into rendered view right now, just wait for it. We can see that it is working, but not that good. And to fix that, we're going to first scale this um, image up until it's on the top. We might have to scale it down on the um, y-axis to get more of that vignetta effect going on over there. And we're going to bring the well camera back. So I'm just going to click on the camera, go into camera view, and we're just going to move it back on the x-axis. So yeah, somewhere around here. So right now, um, since we've did a few changes, we can see that the liquid is now back to looking this, like this really weird lightest color. So now we're gonna bring back the density again to something around 320. Now if we go into layout, it's gonna look darker and better. So I feel like we could scale the liquid down as well. something like this will look good so um as we go on we are gonna start um having to edit a bunch of things because when we do add more light and we do add animations and all that stuff it, it will start to interfere with um the refraction node that we added here so we might have to make it higher so so we might have to go with the value of 420 sometimes we, we might need to lower it but yeah really it's about just messing around trying to find the right value so what i did there just now i made the value a little too high so i'm gonna go back to somewhere around 380. so yeah just like that so over here first we're gonna create the actual water droplets itself and to do that, we're going to first open up a new UV sphere. I'm just going to move this out of the way so people won't be able to see it in the camera view. I'm just going to press period on my number pad to go to get a closer view. And first, I'm going to go into edit mode and we need to create a flat side to it. So one side needs to be flat and the other side needs to be, well, kind of bumpy and curvy. So first, what we're going to do is go into the viewport shading over here, the x-ray mode. And we're gonna go into edge select mode if it still doesn't work. And I'm just gonna choose these edges. So you might have to um, deselect some edges as well if, if they're not full, properly selected. So to do that, we're just gonna go into face select mode again. We're just gonna choose the faces that we don't want by holding down shift. So we don't want any of these faces. So I'm just gonna go into the top. We don't want these faces as well. So just make sure that they're the half that we chose was perfectly selected. So now what we're gonna wanna do is scale it on the y-axis until it's flat, just like that. And then we can move it on the y-axis again, just like that. And that's how to create our first water droplet, basically. Well, our flat side of the water droplet. To, to get the weird um, water droplet like, it, it should have kind of like a tail coming out of it. Or it should be more pointier. And to do that first, we're gonna grab the top part over here, the top vertex, by in vertex mode, and we're gonna choose proportional editing over there on the top. And now if we just move it on the z-axis, we'll be able to create that. So we, you might wanna have to zoom in and out to get a bigger, well, proportional editing circle thingy. And once we get something around that, we're just gonna press tab to go into object mode. Right click, and we're gonna shade smooth. And we might have to add a subdivision surface modifier if you start getting jagged edges over there. So to do that, we're gonna go into the modifiers properties and we're gonna add a subdivision surface. Make them both two and it's gonna look something like this. So make sure not to go too high because when we do the particle systems, it's gonna put multiple of these on the bottle and it's gonna be hard on your computer. So now we're just gonna scale it down until you can't really see it anymore. And we're just gonna create a bunch of variations of these. So before we do that, we're gonna press Alt M or Shift M to make a new collection and we're gonna name these water droplets. 
So it's going to be easier to, well, kind of communicate through which would look, or to put the um, water droplets into a collection. So first we're going to go into edit mode, or for, and we're going to start creating variations of these. And to do that, we're just going to press tab, go into object mode, we're going to duplicate them, move it on the x-axis, outside, make sure that the one that we created is on the water droplets collection over there so to check that we're going to click on this and see that it's over here so if it's here and over there as well it doesn't matter just make sure that at least one of this object is in here so what we're going to do with this we're just going to go into edit mode and you might want to have to um, kind of just move a few objects out so by pressing g if everything starts moving with it just scroll down until you get the proportional editing circle thingy and just kind of unshape in it or just kind of change it up a little it's just to give a bit of variation so even two is just fine we might have to scale it on the x-axis mine looks a little flat fat so somewhere around there okay so now to create the actual particle system we're gonna have to choose the bottle over here so we're gonna choose the bottle press period to get a closer view and we're going to just gonna save this real quick. Okay, so now to create the particle systems, we're gonna press new and we're gonna name we're gonna change this to hair. And what that does is it creates kind of like a particle system that looks like hair. So now we're gonna change the um what object we want to swap it with because right now it looks like hair and we don't want that. We want it to be swapped out with the particles that we created over here. And to do that, we're gonna first go into one of these um render properties over here and we're going to change the render as to a collection so now for the collection if we choose the water droplets it's going to replace them with the water droplets that we created here so obviously they're too small and to change that we can change it over here so we're just going to choose these two yeah okay just get a closer view tab and just going to scale this up oh yeah when you're scaling it up make sure proportional editing isn't turned up so now it's going to actually change the proper size. Just going to do this to this as well. Scale it up. Now if we go into um, object mode and check out the thingy or the water droplets, it should be good. So right now it, it, it's way too well patterned over here. To fix that, we're going to first go into the particle systems over here and we're going to change the seed. Something different. Just give it a little bit of well differentiation change the children to interpolated it doesn't do much it just adds way too much so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change the particle systems amount to something around like 100 and it gives a little more or a little less i should say water particles and so just keep lowering it until you find the right amount so i'm gonna go with something around 62 and it's gonna give this so right now they're not orientated properly so they're kind of horizontal and we want them to be vertical and to fix that we're gonna first go into these um water droplets and we're gonna rotate them so first i'm just gonna move it on the y-axis until it's kind of close to the bottle so i can see which way to orientate them so now if i just press period on my number pad i'll be able to get a closer view and when you're orientating them, make sure you're doing it in edit mode. So now I'm just gonna go take a closer view and it turns out I have to rotate it on the, yeah, on the Y axis. So for you, it might differ. So I'm just gonna rotate it on the Y axis by 90. It's gonna create this, it looks pretty good. Yeah, so if you if you um look at this now, it, lo it will look perfect. And the reason some of them weren't orientated properly was because of the second water droplet that we created. It should be somewhere here. So, not that one. Yeah, it's this one. So, we're just going to have to rotate this as well. Just bringing it closer. Okay, okay. So, somewhere over here. So, over here, now I'm just going to do the same thing we did. I'm just going to rotate them until they fit. So, it's going to be the same axis as you did with that other one. I'm just going to rotate them until they're on the proper one. R, X negative 90 sorry r y negative 90 
I'm just gonna go somewhere over here. So now if we um go into camera view, we can see that some of them are gonna start popping out of the top over here. So if I just hide the lid, you can see that some of them are kind of popping out over here. And to fix that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a vertex group or over here it's called a object data properties yeah over here vertex groups we're gonna create a new vertex group by pressing the new and we're gonna name this something that anything you want so i'm just gonna leave it at the its original name so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into edit mode right now tab and we're gonna go into face select and we're gonna choose the faces that we want the water droplets to be in so for my case, I'm going to make it every th every face except for the lid part over here or the neck or the head, I should say. And now I'm just going to press assign. So now if we go into object mode and I go into this view, it, as you can see, it's still popping out. And that's because we haven't set a vertex group for the particle system to be actually acting upon. And to fix that, we're going to go into the properties over here we're going to go all the way down go into vertex groups go into the density and we're going to choose the group that we created so, so now it's not going to we're not going to have water droplets over on the top or wherever you chose not to have water droplets so now it, you could change um, the amount by going on the top over here so i have 62 you could change it to 55 or literally anything you want so the more you go the more harder it's going to be on your computer just be aware of that. So I'm just going to save this file now. And I'm just going to move these water droplets back so they're not in the camera view. Somewhere around there. And now with the water droplets, we're going to have to give them a texture. So I'm going to go into shading part over here and we're going to create a new texture. So I'm just going to wait for this to load. There we go. We're going to click on the water droplets. I'm going to create a new texture and I'm going to name this water. Okay, so over here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to add a glass shader. So we're going to press Shift A, Glass, BSDF to Surface. And there we go, we've created our texture. So, so over here, in this water droplet that we created, we're going to want to choose the same material. So the glass material over here. And we've gotten the materials. So now if we go into camera view, save it. Go into layout. If we go into the rendered view over here, we should be able to see the water droplets. Just have to wait for it to load. And there we've got, we've got our water droplets. So right now my liquid over here does look a little too dark. So I'm just gonna tune down the strength to somewhere around 320. I think that should look fine. Just gonna wait for it to load. There we go. So we could um, change the background's light strength as well to get a better texture on the water droplets. To do that, we're just going to go into the texture properties over here with the thing, and we're going to change the emission strength to somewhere around 2.2. You could make it higher or lower, but I found this to look pretty good. So now we're going to go into render. We're going to see the rendered view again to see how it looks. And there we go, we've gotten our thingy. So I just need to unhide the lid now, and we've created our bottle. So now for the foam, the foam was actually really easy to create. It's just a simple disc, or we can create we can create that using a sphere. So that would be easier. So I'm just gonna go into the solid mode over here, and we're gonna I'm gonna create a new foam. And to do that, I'm just gonna open up a UV sphere. Move it on the Y axis. And we're gonna have to change the name. And we're gonna have to move it. Because what's happening over here right now is that since we've created a new sphere, it, it's been placed in the water droplets collection. And since um, for the particle system, we chose the water droplets collections to be applied onto the bottle, it's making, sh it's making it so that this is being applied as well. And to do it, and to change that, we're just going to move it manually. So I'm just going to move it up here. So now I'm just going to move it on the y-axis. And I'm going to scale it down on the z-axis. So until it's somewhere around here. 
And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. And to get more vertices, I'm just going to subdivide it to get somewhere like this. And now we're going to turn on proportional editing. But before we do that, we're going to choose a vertex select. We choose the middle one. O to turn on proportional editing. And we're going to choose random over here. So now if we were to move it, I'm just going to scale it up. It's going to start creating these random rippled effects. So just move it up the z-axis until it's a little high somewhere around here. Don't go too high because it's going to start doing this. And if you go too low, it's going to do the same thing as it did on the high, just inverted. It's going to go up with a really subtle effect. So somewhere around there. I'm just going to move a bunch of vertices so to get a more variation. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Just going to move that up. There we go, we've literally created our foam. So we're just gonna shade smooth. And we're gonna go into the shading properties over here. And we're gonna create a shader. Just gonna click new and we're gonna name this foam. And we're gonna delete the principal BSDF and we're gonna add a add shader. So shift A to add a shader and chose the choose the add shader. So I'm gonna plug in shader into surface. I'm going to get two shaders, and that's going to be first the diffuse. Plug that BSDF into shader. And we're going to get the subsurface scattering. So subsurface scattering. Over here, and we're going to plug in the BSDF into shader. So now with these two shaders selected, we're, gonna, we're not going to change any of these um, values over here, except for the scale. So we're going to make the scale somewhere around 0.1 to get a better view. And with this selected, we're gonna want to change the color to something a little low. So don't change the actual color, but the set, but the value of it. So over here, I'm just gonna drag it down. And since this is a add shader, we wanna make it, we wanna make sure that it's pretty low. So when it does add the shaders together, it will look brighter in the end. Because if we find that this value would look great, um, since this is an add shader, it's gonna make it like double the amount that we wanted so we're just gonna go with a really low color so somewhere around here i'm gonna do the same here uh not that low just somewhere around here just a little higher and if we go into layout we're gonna save this and now we're just gonna have to move it into the bottles position so i'm gonna go here and go close to the bottom i'm just gonna move this on the y-axis until it's on top of the bottle so somewhere around here, I'm just going to scale this down until it fits the neck. So over here, and I'm going to go into the Y or X axis mode. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go into wireframe mode. I'm just going to bring this up. So this is where the liquid is, and that's where we want to place the foam. So over here. So right now, it's creating this really weird gaps over here. And to fix that, we're going to do the same thing we did with the water droplets. Go into tab into edit mode. We're going to choose approximately halfway through. I'm just going to scale this down on the z-axis. So like that. Oh, we have proportional editing on. Turn that off. And I'm just going to move it on the z-axis. Just slightly. So now with everything selected, go into object mode again. And bring it down until it's on the liquid. So if you want, you could actually scale this up on the z-axis just to make it a little thicker so it's more visible. So now if I just scale this, go into camera view, and if I go into viewport shading or the rendered view, it's going to look like this. So just wait for it. You might want to have to zoom in to the thingy. So right now it looks really dark, and that's what we did over here with the shading properties over here. If it looks a little dark... Make it brighter. I'm gonna go with something really bright. Because because the scene is too too dark, I feel like a really bright value would make it look good. Now we're just gonna go check how that looks. It looks pretty well. So now if we go into this view, you'll be able to see the foam. If you don't like how it looks, just make it bigger. Because right now mine does seem to look a little too small i'm just gonna choose the foam i'm just gonna hide this i think it will make it better to click on the foam i'm just gonna scale it up on the c-axis 
yeah, just gonna make it really big. And then I'll take to unhide the hidden stuff. If you go into the camera view, I'm gonna move the backdrop up a little and go into rendered view. And right now it looks pretty nice, so I'm just gonna wait for it. And there we go. Okay, so that was the end of this five part, well, technically three part tutorial series I made in Blender. So if you remember, to sum it up, in part one, we made the basic shape of the bottle. In part two, we did the basic texturing of the bottle. And in part three, we did the basic stuff such as the modeling of the liquid, the bottle's cap, and their texturing as well. And in part four, we did the basic stuff such as the lighting, backdrop, flooring, and all that. And in part five, we made the basic stuff such as the particle systems and the foam. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. And if you did, make sure to subscribe, hit, hit that like button and the notification button, and stay tuned for future tutorials like this.